Hi there. Today I uh, wanted to talk about the sensation of being bad, feeling bad, and reckoning with that in the body and in the psyche. Hey there. So if you can find a place to settle, that's awesome. And for today, you can really be extra gentle, and be in a reclined position or relaxed in any way you want. So as we're requested to talk about this and I think it's one of the biggest places that is required to reckon with if we really want to wake up, we really want to heal and transform. Um, Our ideas of awakening can feed into this badness. The idea that we need to be different than how we are in this moment can be coming from this badness. And it looks different in each person. It looks like not good enough. Why should I try anyway? Waiting to die, rotting hopelessness, giving up corpse-like states that are just left behind long ago. And if we have the privilege to either have enough love in our system for these things to come up or just to be faced with them, We know we can't go under, around, above, beyond this feeling of being bad in some fundamental way, sin, like sin, evil. It's the place in us that no matter how many things we buy, no matter how many things we own, no matter how successful or how many people love us and express that love or even truly mirror us, it's still hungry for redemption. And the only thing that can meet this core sense of badness is true nature or the self or love or God, whatever you want to call it. So tonight I just want to be especially sweet as the psyche might be listening some hope in the dark corners. To let the bad one be here. To let the feeling of you're the only exception to the rule. You're left behind. You're fundamentally flawed. 
you're broken, unredeemable, to find that frequency in the body, to find that clench in the actual physical, fleshy tone of right now. Mm, just letting it be here is a lot. Sitting with it on your lap. There's nothing you can say to convince this one it's not bad. It's not positive affirmations or spiffy new healing techniques. This one is your survival dependent on clenching in that space as a child. You had to get small in some way so that others could be in control. And not wig out on you. Now this is the opportunity to just let the sun of being and gently touch the sensation of feeling bad. I spent lots of hours exploring just how bad this one was, what it wanted to do and where it wanted to go, how it wanted to behave, what it really thought about the world and its friends. And I worked in a dyad relationship with either other spiritual buddies or a mentor, reflecting back that what I was was okay, even as a little gremlin that wanted to tear people up or a one that was just so sad that it couldn't be included. All the places that we're convinced we're going to be rejected and that we're utterly bad. It's a really good place for reflection. To show, to show up and let this part be witnessed by the space that you are it is just one little tiny step out of the determined belief that it's definitely true. It's only a sensation and then thoughts are created about the sensation. When those two things are really teased apart, it's pretty amazing what can happen. We're scared of feeling this bad one in our interactions with people, in our daily life, even scared of being it from our own self-criticism in our kitchens. 
But this one is here, this feeling bad. We can't go around it, can't go over it. And it's time for it to see some sunlight, to be welcomed, to be curious about it. even just to feel how utterly convincing it is. Like, wow. There's a force behind it because of the degree that you had to clench as a little kid like a bright, shining little kid, very well aware of its magnificence and loving essence and playfulness and creativity, had to smash it down. And you're not bad. Even the parts that are homicidal, the parts that feel like pure evil. If you can touch those places, the psyche contains the whole spectrum when we're honest. And the people that have reckoned with their bad one, evil one, nasty one, rejectable one, are the safest people to be around because they're not being controlled by what's in the background, what's being shoved down. And how to reckon with it, just to start letting this presence that you are in the healing space here and all the other healing spaces that you can find to really get a sense of the feel of it in the body and to soothe it, to let it be here, to not decide that it needs to be different or you need to be awakened or healed by now. It just got all those messages when you're little. Grow up. Be quiet. Doesn't need any more of that. It's just too much pain to feel. That's why it turns inward into self-hatred or outward. It's just too much pain. It's so deep that it'll take you right into the heart of love. Such a deep aspect of the self, a layer. It'll take you right into there. Just let it take you in the sensation of it without believing what your mind says it means. Let it see its perfection. 
Let it look. Let it look at the truth. Like the Wicked Witch of the West, when it sees the sun melting. And the bad one can be really quiet too. It can just be this slight sense that this moment needs to be different. In the nervous system, just a little sense that, nah, not this way. Or it can be loud. Let it come up. Let it soak. And to me, it's so much easier to let what's here be here than it is to try to convince it out of its badness. To see just how bad it is. I went to the end of every aspect that I could see and let it be in the body. Let it snarl its teeth and do its spells and, you know, whatever it needed to do, not in the world, in sessions, in meditation, letting the sensation be here. That's how we can see through it. And just keep going down into the feeling of it and not trying to get anywhere, just to be curious, like, if you saw a little baby that was just convinced it was bad and you could see its radiance, its simplicity, its beauty, its innocence, what would you do? It's kind of like letting fried nerves be soothed. I'm not trying to fix them anymore. Letting God come to you, even in the badness.
if God is omnipresent, that means he's everywhere. It's everywhere. If God is love, that means all is love. Even those contractions that feel otherwise. That's God coming in that form to be revealed. Seems that love wants to get into a lot of places that are bad, quote unquote. Just to see if it's there. Everybody creates a little bubble of isolation in this part of their psyche. Either a wall where they don't know it, or a bubble where they believe it, or they stay separate and they try to hide it. As you see the truth of it in yourself, you'll be able to look right into it in other people and know its nature. Not be hypnotized by the bad curse. I remember trying to fix it for so long and then just being like, I'm bad. Okay, I'm bad. What if I was bad? And just feeling the whole feeling. What if I was bad? And it starts to lift out of the shadows and fill itself with love with being, with truth, with light. Dare to look. It's that part that's always being dodged. And it finally gets to be here and it's not being dodged. We're told to go in the other room, told to be quiet. And 
and can start to see itself with innocence. Down to the core, the bright core. And when you reckoned with this part, it's way less triggered by other people. It's like it's been loved, it's been seen, it's been tended to. So if somebody says something rough, then it reveals that part. It's like you've already faced that sensation in your body. You're not utterly devastated or knocked off your center. And sometimes you just don't even notice because it's already been healed there. And there's nothing that someone can say out of their badness, their outwardly projected badness that can convince you that it's true because you've seen the core of it. You've seen, you've looked, you've risked seeing if it's really true. The badness of bad. Is there a bad to bad. Or is it just like this? And as I'm speaking, just feel free to soak. No need to follow every sentence. Basically everything that we tell ourselves, the patterns in our nervous system of pushing things down or aside or being overwhelmed is just the message that we got for our little parts. And so it's nice to watch that. Oh, wow, I really can't be here and be bad. Or I really can't be here and feel bad. I feel like I need to be shiny. I feel like I need to be Perfect. I feel like I need to be rested. I feel like I need to be wholesome. And God wants everything. There's no discrimination in being. There's no division. There's no good and bad. So 
That's the tree of good and evil. And there's another tree of life. It's worth really embodying the fullness of the sensation, holding a hand or looking in eyes that reflect your essential self as you feel those parts. I see that they're not bad. I've never seen a bad one. Never seen a bad one. Not here, not there. And this isn't about bad acts or acts that are, you know, illegal or whatever an entirely different conversation that's an embodied conversation. So our essential nature being bad or not. It's not possible. good nor bad. And of course, if this is overwhelming for the nervous system, or you get into a loop, it drives you into a loop of thinking you're bad, that's a trauma loop. It's nice to feel when you're in one of those. And it's just not time to feel the bad one. You can tell it that you'll be back when you have some resource and support, but in this moment you can lean in as much as you can, finding this space supportive. Look at all the beliefs that it has believed over your life. The sensation. You can feel what threads they're associated with. The more that you get a hint of the flavor of what it feels like. Things you don't belong. Things you don't have the stuff.
It just wants to give up or it already has. And it's all perfect. It's all welcome. The mind just makes up stuff so that it, for a moment, doesn't have to feel it. But it ends up making it worse. It's like, how do I say something so convincing that she'll leave her body and go into her head? Like, you're a loser in your head. Makes you leave your body and go, oh, that's a believable story in my head and it gave you a little break from just this mundane gut uck yucky feeling and strength comes in when you can be with it in the body and catch the storyline Catch the escape route disguised as what is happening. You just let it flop here doesn't have any way to be other than itself. What if you just admitted you didn't know? You didn't know if you were bad. Maybe you don't know what's going on at all. What's happening?
And there's not going to be a you that gets awakened when it discovers the bad one. It's more like a shedding of a false dream, a false sensation. And then they're just left here. Capital H-E-R-E. No you. Not knowing. It's such psychological maturity to take that step out of that conclusion, to stop believing the mind and to really risk seeing what's actually here, what's actually happening, and being honest. Like, okay, I don't know. I feel bad, that's for sure. There's sensations that are challenging or difficult. I don't know. I don't know what it actually means. That's something that I made up or that I was told. It's the doorway to redemption. Innocence. Except ye be like children, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Something like the biblical phrase with Old English that I can't remember. Be as a child, be innocent of your ideas of your badness. And you will be handed this capital T-H-I-S, this now. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for coming and if you rest into this deeper and deeper. <laughs>